Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this session, we will be looking at part six of your uh, AWS scenario based questions. Now, uh, this is going to be the last part uh, as part of this series of your uh, AWS scenario based questions. So, including this part six, uh, we have now covered 60 uh, AWS scenario based questions. Some very interesting questions which you can definitely expect uh, as part of your uh, AWS interview questions. So this is going to be the last uh, uh, part. Uh, once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So the first question that we have for, as part of your uh, part six is you your application experiences unpredictable traffic patterns. How can you automatically adjust your EC2 instances capacity to meet this demand? So basically have your application running on EC2 instances and this application it experiences very unpredictable traffic so how are you going to handle that so for this again we are going to utilize your auto scaling groups so auto scaling groups will help us to automate the scaling up and scaling down of your ec2 instances and this will help us to dynamically adjust the number of ec2 instances. so we can scale up we can scale down we can define the condition as to when uh, the auto scaling group should scale up the instances when it should scale down the instances we can define that and this will help us to handle the uh, uh, traffic that your application gets and help helps to improve the performance of your applications the next question we have is explain the concept of a vpc peering connection in aws so vpc peering is part of your uh, VPC service. Now we know that your VPC uh, is used to create logically isolated section in the AWS cloud. So it's basically your networking service. Now within that we have something known as VPC peering. Now there are cases where you might end up working with multiple VPCs like more than two VPCs. Now by default the two VPCs they are isolated from each other one vpc cannot talk to another vpc so let's say for example i'll go to my vpc service over here and by default you'll have one vpc but if you have created one more uh, vpc so let's say we have two vpcs in the aws account now by default what happens is the resources that we have running in these two vpcs they cannot talk to each other so let's say for example i have one ec2 instance that is running in the default vpc and then i have one ec2 instance running in the custom vpc now by default there's no communication between these two instances now if you want the traffic to flow between these two vpcs we make use of your peering connection so peering connections is mainly used to establish a communication between two vpcs so like let's say vpc1 and vpc2 so if you want to establish the communication between these two vpcs and allow the traffic from vpc1 to vpc2 or vice versa we can make use of your vpc peering for that so this mainly helps the communication between the two vpcs as if they were on the same network while still maintaining the network isolation the Next question we have is your organization has a strict policy on data retention and wants to archive the data in a cost effective manner. Which AWS service can help us with data archiving? Now in AWS, whenever we talk about your data archiving, the service that we have is Amazon Glacier. Okay, so S3 Glacier. So that's the service uh, which helps us with data archival. So this provides us a cost uh so secure and cost effective uh, data archiving process and this also gives you a long term backup solution so maybe you want to store the data for years together three years four years five years whatever it is we can make use of your amazon glacier so this amazon glacier it makes use of your uh tape drives and that is where your cost is much lesser when compared to using the other options in s3 like your standard or uh uh, standard IA. So whenever we talk about your data backup or data archiving, we can make use of your Amazon Glacier for that. The next question we have is uh, you want to automate server configuration management and ensure consistency across your EC2 instances. Now, which service can we use in AWS? So uh, let's say we have 10 EC2 instances. Now we want to maintain the consistency, maybe some configurations or 
applications or any packages so we want to maintain the consistency across these instances now what can we use for that so for this we can make use of your systems manager service which allows us to automate your server configuration your patching and many more um, uh, tasks so if you go to the systems manager service and if you look at this it it gives us lots of options it's, it's a very powerful service i would say so we can use this for change manager uh, your state manager session manager patch manager so it gives you various options so we can use this to uh, automate your server configuration management uh, patching your servers or maintaining any compliance and this will ensure we are maintaining a consistency and security across your ec2 instances so even if you have like let's say 100 servers we can manage those servers from your systems manager very easily the next question we have is your organization needs to establish secure and private connectivity between aws and uh, remote networks such as branch offices which aws service can help with so here basically we are again talking about multiple networks and uh, uh, what can we use in aws to um, you know basically establish a connectivity between these various networks and also maintain security now for this we can leverage the vpn services that we have in aws so if you go to the vpc service here we should be able to see your uh, vpn services so let me see so here this one the vpn services that you can see here we can utilize this to establish a connectivity across multiple uh, networks and then also uh, make sure they are secure so we can make use of your uh, site to site vpn and aws client vpn and this will uh, ensure uh, that the connectivity is established across various networks and also they are secure so you know the security is also taken care of so you know these connectivity options can be utilized for remote for connecting remote networks with the aws network the next question we have is you want to ensure that your ec2 instances have secure and timely access to credentials and configurations how can you achieve this so for this again we can make use of your systems manager and under this systems manager we have this option called parameter store so we can use this to store all of our parameters it can be anything sensitive data or any plain text anything you want to keep we can maintain that in this parameter store and this will help us to store and manage your credentials your configuration details or any information securely making it easily available to your ec2 instances so once that information is stored in the uh, is, uh, parameter store we can start calling that from the ec2 instance the next question we have is your application relies on relational database with complex queries what aws service can help you optimize the performance of your uh, database so again under this um for under your rds service we have something known as performance insights which can be used to provide real-time monitoring and recommendations which helps you to optimize the performance of your database and also making uh, it suitable for complex query workload so if you go to the rds service over here so let's go to the rds service and under this service you should find the performance insights option which gives you a uh, uh, insights into the performance of your database and also recommendations as to what can you do to improve the performance of your database so we can utilize this the next question we have is you need to implement a disaster recovery solution for your on premises data center which service can you use in aws so we want to set up a dr uh, for your on-premises data center so aws disaster recovery services such as aws backup and aws storage gateway so this provides us with a disaster recovery option which can be used to uh, implement a dr setup for your on-premises data center and the data that you have so if you um, uh, let's let's look at the different different services so you can make use of your storage gateway for this 
we can also implement your uh, backup the aws backup that we have we can use this to maintain the different different backups of your data the next question you have is you want to implement a serverless architecture to process data from iot devices uh, which aws service can help you with real time data processing now aws iot core and aws lambda service can be used to process your real time data from any of your iot devices and this provides you a serverless architecture so we can implement your iot core so if you go to the iot services the internet of things services uh so here we can see your iot core and then we can also make use of your lambda service aws lambda service so we can use these two services together which provides us a serverless architecture and also process huge amount of data with efficiency the next question we have is your organization requires tight integration between development testing and deployment processes now which aws service can help you achieve continuous integration and continuous deployment so basically the ci cd setup so what services we can use in aws to set up the ci cd pipeline now in aws we have services like code pipeline and code deploy which can be used to set up your ci cd and this helps you to automate and streamline your development and deployment process in aws so aws has its own set of um, uh, ci cd tool so we can use your code pipeline uh, we can use code commit as part of your uh, repository we can use your code deploy to automate your deployment so we can utilize these services to set up your ci cd process on aws by making use of the services provided by aws right so that's about the questions that i have as part of your part six so once again, this is the last part I have as part of this uh, uh, AWS scenario based question series. And again, we have covered 60 very interesting uh, scenario based questions that you can definitely expect as part of your interview process. And if you really find this helpful, uh, please like this and share. And if there's any feedback, please leave it in the comment section. Would really appreciate that. That's all I have for this session. Thank you. Once again, before you leave, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, leave a like and please share the video.